Peace family, welcome to BattleOnline.com, your one-stop shop for the highest hip-hop entertainment. Bringing you the dopest, no-limit interviews, hip-hop legends, reviews, views, news, and more. So if you haven't already, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be updated on new drops and content. Peace family, it's your boy Fonzie from BattleOnline.com, and we joined this week with a special guest, and this is x Khan. what's good with you, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the King, man. I, I seen your interviews, man. I see your work. I was elated. My daughter put me on you. I was elated to hear you uh, You was doing your thing, man. And uh, I just wanted to reach out to you. Tell you I love what you're doing, man. And, you know, and just to holler at the people who may not have known everything about my about my moves when I was with No Limit, but, you know, to give them a little insight. So I appreciate you. Oh, man, we appreciate that. And we appreciate you and um, especially like most members of the tank, you know, whether their tenure was long or whether they had a short stint, we appreciate, you know, what they brought to the tank and what they brought to, you know, even just us as fans and stuff. So we're definitely interested to hear more about your story and hear it directly from you yourself, which is definitely, uh, you know, something that we're looking forward to hearing. So to kind of start off with things then, I guess, where did you, where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, you know, they call us the bottom of the map. You know, that's where it's going down there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I, I grew up in Baton Rouge and then I moved out here to Texas. So I've been out here for about the last 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. I remember seeing like, um, it was like an old interview at the time that you did. I can't remember for what publication it was, but um, you had spoke on obviously spending some time, you know, being incarcerated and through that, you know, getting into music and stuff like that. So can you right. detail like some of those early beginnings and stuff? What was your, I guess your influences and stuff, but um, where, did, so, where did that take so, you to where you got to? So, yeah, so initially I, I wasn't even into rapping at first. Like I, I was into that ball, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was like hooping. And uh, so, you know, doing a lot of crazy, crazy shit, man, making bad decisions when I was young. I went to jail for armed robbery uh, when I was 16. And uh, so uh, they gave me, uh, I got uh, 12 years for, for the armed robbery case. I did six on my first bid. I went in 89. I come home in 95. And you know, that's my first joke. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I, I got it now. I, I, I just try to figure out a different way how to do wrong. So um, I ended up getting back in the streets and I stayed out about two years and I got caught up on a, uh, I got caught up at a, a, a police stop. They were stopping, stopping people for insurance and all that. Had a couple of my partners in the car. I had a little pistol in the car. So when they pulled me over, they asked to check the car and I'm like, check the car for what? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, they ended up checking the car and found the pistol. So I go back to jail for a pistol case. I do two and a half years, and then I come home. Well, when I come home that time, uh, uh, one of my partners named Terry Rito, he used to, you know, he had a sport agency. And uh, Rito used to work for Pete. But Rito was my partner before he used to work for Pete. And we used to be going back and forth to Chicago. So anyway, he seen one of my relatives, and he was asking Bob, and it was like, yeah, um, you know, Black just come home. And he was like, yeah, give him my number. Hey man, I need to holler at him, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, I ended up calling. He come through the apartment where I was living at. He pull up in the big bin. So I'm like, I'm like, damn, Rito, that's how you doing it? So he's like, Dad, yeah, you know, I'm working for Percy. I say, Percy? He was like, Pete. I say, yeah. He say, yeah, man, say, you talking with the rap? I said, a little bit, man, you know what I'm saying? So he was like, look, I'm gonna introduce you to dude trying to get you on, you know what I'm saying, blah, blah, blah. So I wasn't really, to be honest with you, I wasn't really a No Limits fan. I was more in the cash money, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but but I respect the Pete Grinding, how he was doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, but anyway, long story short, Rito took me by, uh, by his office. It was uh, in Sherville Forest in Baton Rouge, where I'm from, right? So he took me to meet Pete. So we at the office, I'm sitting up there, you know, in my mind, I'm like, hey, I'm finna meet Pete, man. This nigga's finna go down, you know what I'm saying? So P, Steve Murder, and a couple other kids, they come through the door. But P and C Murder, they kind of going back and forth. They kind of arguing about some stuff. Uh, P telling C, like, man, you can't keep going down there to the projects when them niggas calling you on that dumb shit. 
we run the record label and this, that, da, 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 da. So they go in there, they all for a little while. So anyway, P ended up coming out. When he come out, Rita was like, say, P, it's my people. Ex-Con, who I was telling you about, was like, blah, blah, blah. So he was like, yeah, Rito told me you get out. You know, he was like, well, let me hear something. So I started doing some shit, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody who know me from back from back then, well, my 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 first name was GYG, which was Gush Young Gangster. That's the street I grew up on in the park in Baton Rouge, right? So in the penitentiary, everybody knew me by GYG. And whenever I used to rap, I used to be, you know what I'm saying, and beating on my chest like the ship. So everybody rolling. So when I got to doing that, I did the little rap. Before I can get through with the first verse, he was like, that's good, say it. Bring him by the house, right? So boom, we leave. My dude, Rito, he like, say, man, he must fuck with you. But he say, bring you by the house. He don't really just say that to everybody. So I'm like, that's what's happening. So, you know, P had bought a, a house in Baton Rouge. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, they all had a house. Like, see, uh, P had one out there. But anyway, like that, probably about a week later, Rito come scoop me. We go down. It's at the country club in Baton Rouge, right? So we get to the gate. They let us in, we pull up. I see this big ass house, it got about 30 cars, everybody everywhere, like the whole No Limit family, everybody there, right? They working on the 504 bar CD right now. Oh, uh, they, they was just working on it. So I go in, I get in the elevator, go upstairs, peeing them upstairs, they listening to some tracks, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm meeting everybody, you know. Anyway, long story short, uh, Rito, uh, he got P attending. He was like, say, I got con here. So he like, see, come in, man. So he playing, he playing the track. And it happened to be the track, uh, Watch Them Boys with me, P, and Mac on there, right? So I'm listening to it. So he say, hey, you can do something with that? I said, see, hell yeah. So he say, go to the booth. Boom. I go get in the booth, put the headphones on, right? And then come on, Watch Them Boys. I'm here, I'm listening to the hook. You don't know them boys, you better... So I got to eating that bitch up. So when I come out, niggas say, okay, all right. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, uh, but but that's 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 the introduction to Pete, how I met him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but lo and behold, uh, I, I don't know if Jimmy is kin to Pete, but a nigga who I was locked up with at DCI named Jimmy, uh, we downstairs. We shoot ball in the, in the back of P house. He knew he had a, a full coat, a basketball coat. We back there whooping. And I see Jimmy. He say, Michael Jordan, man, what's happening? But that's what they used to call me the penitentiary, Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I was a dog with that ball, man. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm like, man, what you doing here? He said, man, they're my, they're my people. So he got the bragging on me. He said, shit, nigga, I got fun on Michael Jordan, anybody. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he was pulling for me, man. But but anyway, man. What's that, um... The one that is cousin Jimmy Hot Boy, Jimmy Keller. Yeah, Hot Boy Jimmy. Yeah, me and Jimmy done about about four years, about four years ago in DCI. But I never know he was keen to pee. I just used to notice he was always fly. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we go to the visiting nigga had on. He kept on nice tennis shoes. The nigga was always fly, man. You know what I'm saying? But he was he was quiet, kind of laid back. You know what I'm talking about? But I'm I never good. knew he was keen to pee though. You know, but uh. A lot of people ask what he was like, you know, even a lot of the fans and stuff, they, you know, because yeah. they see him in a lot of the, the movies, the videos and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, his yeah. Reputation. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was cool people, man. You know, he, he was cool people. But um, so, so anyway, me and P kind of got on a relationship with the basketball because P was hooping too. So I ended up coming down here to Houston because he was finishing recording the album down here, he had a house. Well, all of them had a house down here too in Brightwater, uh, Brightwater in, in Brightwater, Texas. So we used to fly down here uh, to finish recording the album, uh, the uh, 504 Boy CD. But me and P used to go to uh, Funded. It's a gym up here. They used to rent the gym out private. Me and him used to be hooping. I used to be hooping with uh, with the Houston Rockets, uh, Catino Mobley, uh, all them boys used to be in there hooping, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we, we had like a different little relationship, you know what I'm saying? So, so a lot of times when I when I came down here, man, it would be hooping or whatever. Uh, so you know, like I say, man, we I, I, our little relationship was a little different. Even even with that, when I first got with, when I first got with No Limit and I signed a little deal or whatever, uh, on the same on the same street where where I met P at in his office, his sport agent office, 
like on Silver Forest, he had all of us in some condominiums. He, I guess he had uh, real estate in his condominiums or whatever. So it was like, it was me, D.I.G., uh, Crazy, Popeye. I think it was uh, Peaches. Like me and Peaches was the only one from Bad Rouge on the label. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, but me and me and D, we got, me and D.I.G., we got close. Uh, me and Crazy, we got we got jammed. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm saying uh, rest in peace, Popeye as well. We said the last Popeye now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, man. And so we all stayed up. But you know, when I came with, about, when I came to No Limit, I already had three daughters. I already had a family, right? So we stay. I stayed in the condominium for about for about six months. So I'm trying to go with to say, man. I ain't even gonna lie. The, the, the condo too small for me, but I got like I got a family. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Long story short, please say, hey, find a house. Let me know what's happening, or uh, and get that buys. You know what I'm saying? Let buys go boom, boom, boom. Because P was paying our rent up for like a year at a time. Like we ain't had to, you know what I'm saying? He was paying our rent up. So like, like when I hear people, like I hear the old stories about P, how he used to be, uh, uh not paying his orders or jacking them. Say, man, look, look. The concept I, I I took from that was like, hey, you ain't putting no album out or no nothing. This man to put you in the vehicle, he paying your rent up, he put money in your pocket. All you gotta do is go to the studio and record. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what it was. You know what I'm saying? But but everybody thinks since P a millionaire, he he's just supposed to put everybody on and have you like he is. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? But it's that's not how the game works, man. So I, I I just and I used to watch dude. He talk about smoking and drinking in his music. I ain't seen him never smoke. We pulled, we pulled champagne at his house one time. We were celebrating. Miss Sita came to his house and was uh doing an interview with him. I don't know if you remember Miss Sita. It was she was on a she was like that animated cartoon on this little rap TV show. I think it was like not the basement, but it was something else. But she was an animated cartoon. And but the live figure came to his house to interview him about his, you know, accolades and stuff like that. And so we was all celebrating, pulled some champagne. Man, nigga ain't never drank that shit, dog. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I found amusing. See, I was watching everything. I was watching his moves. Like he talked about the smoking and all that shit, but he ain't do none of that. He was business oriented. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I always respected about him. You know? Yeah. Yo. Oh, definitely. Yeah. We're, we're gonna get back to some of the no limit stuff. Just touching on that point. What do you feel about that? With some, um, I guess people give criticism in that aspect where. They say with artists maybe portraying stuff like that, that could be impressionable to young people and then, you know, the next generation, but they don't partake themselves. You know, 50 Cent as well, he's number one like that as well, you know. But some say it's just music, it's just like playing a uh, uh, role and stuff, or do you think the impact is, uh, you know, too mm -hmm. much to put that responsibility on the artist? Well, because I'm older and I see life through different lenses, I, I can say, I can say right now that 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 we are, I think, responsible for a, a lot of what's happening, as far as you know, uh, with the violence, the drug use, but movies as well. Everybody playing their part, but I but I do believe that that rappers are very influential. You know what I'm saying? And if we the, the things that we talk about, I guess initially, you know, rap was about the struggle, talking about the struggle. And, and how we getting out it, you know what I'm saying? And how we making a, a life that's better. Now, it's not about whether or not you getting out it. It's just talking about, it's just glamorizing all the violence, all the drug use. And so I think it's, I think it's sending a, I think it's sending an adverse message to the people that's consuming this music. You know what I'm saying? So I do agree that, that, that a lot of times the stuff that we, the message that we put out in our music, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's damaging. You know what I'm saying? Psychologically, especially to the youth, because they're very impressionable. So you see an artist, for example, like them, like the shoes, the Vans, right? I remember when I was younger, you would never catch us in Vans. Because mm -hmm. to us, it was like little white boy shoes. We called them shit stones. You had them kind of shoes on everybody to talk about you. Well, I'm not saying Lil Wayne was the first one. When he started doing that little skateboard and stuff and wearing the Vans and promoting it, hey man, Everybody and their mama wearing it now. And 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 and, and the price of vans did triple because okay. of the amount of traffic that they get. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, yeah, 
artists artists have a responsibility, man, and they don't they don't want to they don't want to say that they they don't want to have it, but in actuality, uh, we are teachers yeah. because it's story it's stories that we tell it, people listening to it, so either they gonna follow what's going on, they are gonna emulate what's what's happening in, in the stories that we telling, or or if they able to differentiate, you know what's what's reality from just bullshit, then that's cool. But everybody ain't on it. Everybody yeah, can't yeah. differentiate that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's definitely what I said. And I think one thing that was dope about No Limit and, you know, definitely some of the stuff that you guys did was just the diversity of songs. It wasn't just um, one vein of material. One song that's noteworthy that is um, called up is It Don't Get No Better, which is mm-hmm. featured and the girl posted the look. And before we get to this, like, we want to say you as had a couple of names, Black Fella and, and X Concert. Do you want to break that down first and, um, so we know how that name change sort of happened because we see different credits under both names? My bad. That's, that was my, that was my wife calling. So, so, yeah. All right. So when I, when I first come home, like I say, my, my, my rap name was uh, GYG, Stan. That's still the Gush John Gangster. So, uh, at some point, I ended up changing it to X Kong, and it was spelled X dash C O N. So when I met Pete, uh, we, we we started off with the with the name X Kong, and then then P found out that was a cat from uh, California named X Kong too, right? And he had this little song out called Yo Lil Mama, I think something like that. And so we didn't want to get no uh no infringement rights or, or violations or you know have, have no no confusion. So P said, hey, check this out. We're gonna change your name to Black Fella. I say, shit, let's do it. I ain't tripping, you know what I'm saying? Uh so you know, because everybody who know me, you know, know me for being XCOM, once they be able, be able to put the picture to the face with the black fella, they'll know the name change. So yeah. So that's you know you know he we ended up changing my name to Black Fella. So I went through the whole no limit phase being Black Fella on some of the albums. I think on the five or four bar CD, um, uh, I might have said X Con on one of the songs. Uh, but yeah, moving yeah, forward, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but after that it was Black Fella. So after yeah, I left, yeah. after I left No Limit, I stayed with No Limit about two years. After I left No Limit. And I got my own record label. I, I met a couple of cats from Texas. I was doing some promoting down here, and I uh, met a couple of te- uh, a couple of cats from Texas down here, who was trying to do their thing. And uh, so we linked up together, uh, Booty, Chris Phillips, uh, Chaz, and we came up with uh, a label called Gorilla Entertainment, right? So we started funding out, putting our own money behind the project, stuff like that. And uh, so I was able to one of the dudes that that was on my team, he was a photographer for Lift Flip here in Texas. Lift Flip was the man at that time, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, my partner hooked up a little deal for me to get a song with Lift Flip. Go by Lift Flip studio, I meet him. We put on some beats, we hit the shit, write some shit right there, boom, smashed it, right? So the name of the song was called It's Our Time. And uh, oh, it was me and Lift Flip, so it was hot. And so where I was getting, where I was getting my music, Mix down, mix the master that the studio I was getting it done at. Lil Kiki was getting his music done there. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah, yeah, Kiki. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we end up, we know we end up chopping it up. My people got a little relationship with him. He got this little football team that he that he be fucking with or whatever. So he was like, see man, give me two thousand dollars, put it into my little football team, I'll come drop a verse for you. So I did a verse with him. He did a verse with me for my album, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So you know. I had a nice little buzz going down here, man. I, I, you know, I had a nice little buzz, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, those Kiki and Flip sounds were noteworthy, and we did put them up. We had some people that said um, you gave them some, like, shades of, like, pocket and some of the delivery and stuff. But before we go there, because I, I did kind of take you off point slightly, we wanted to kind of detail a few of the sounds that the fans would know from the No Limit era. Um, it don't get no better being one of them. Um, you know, what was... You know that experience, like recording that song. I, it don't get no better. I'm trying to remember that one. Trying to remember that. One. Trying to remember that. One. It was on the um ghetto postage album. It don't get no better. Me and my dogs go stick together with your poem. 
Poor mm. rich, no limits. I mean, we don't quit. I believe that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say, man, like, I, I, so, so for me, like, oh, uh, oh, uh, like I used to write shit right on the spot. You know what I'm saying? I had a lot of music I had, I had from when I went to jail. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of, a lot of the music I had, but. But a lot of that shit I wrote on the spot, man, it's just it was just about about the feeling, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, uh, and then everybody, everybody there kind of appreciated my style, kind of appreciated what I brought to to, to No Limit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I, I enjoyed, I, I I especially enjoyed doing that song there. Um, and a lot of people told me like, hey man, you got a little bit of pop, a little bit of DMX. Which I probably did, cause cause a lot of the music I, I used to listen to, I was locked up, and it was them. You know what I'm saying? So so I patented a lot of my music from that. However, like if you listen to a lot of my music, I got a lot of different styles. Even like like with Bone Thugs and Harmony, you I don't think nobody nobody never heard it because it was supposed to come out on the album I did after No Limit, but I ended up going back to the penitentiary, and so I lost all I lost all of that. You know what I'm saying? But uh. But it was all. Uh, it was like all. Uh, it was like all. Uh, all about a nigga. What about a nigga running at the four four? Try to shock style my bed. That nigga better be sure it was still book one time. Making sure that I don't be with me. Some still on the come up. Player haters get the nigga one to run up and get done up. Gotta get a gag. Gotta pay a book a motherfucker with the sun down to the sun up. You know what I'm saying? Like so. You know, okay. I just yeah. had different styles. I was just able to do different. It's kind of you know one of the signs that was dope that you was on featuring um uh, you know the fast flow that I think was dope yeah. Was on the CP3.com album, Do You Wanna Ride? With yeah, Slay, with, with you Slate know, Dawn. Slay, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, everybody, yeah. I think everybody killed that. I mean, what was that? What was that like? What was the relationship like with C? Hey, hey, man. So, look, me and C, we got into it at first at P House on the basketball court, right? So, I'm doing my thing. Boom, boom, boom. And while I'm doing it, I'm talking shit. So, I think C come in one time and he was coming to the rim. I went up to go block it. I found him, right? So he said, man, all that ball, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I said, hey, man, look. <laughs> say, look, check this out, bro. We gonna who or what we gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Who, who we steady, rah, rah. I ain't really trying to hear all that. But at the same time, I know, hey, I'm, I'm in y'all territory. I can't, you know what I'm saying? But after that, me and C was, we was like this here. Like, so... Where I ended up getting a house at in Sherwood Forest, he had a, a studio house, like maybe a couple blocks over. We used to go over there, we call a lot of music, uh, we used to hoop, you know what I'm saying? Then a couple, a couple blocks over from that, XL had a house. That's where uh that's where uh uh me and uh man, what's uh I'm tripping. me and uh man. Me crazy. D.I.G. maybe. Dig, yeah, we, we did some music over there. So the Slim. That's okay. what me and So the Slim, yeah. That's what we recorded the song for his album. They used to push his album on the streets, maybe. I was gonna get yeah. to that next to get get you mind right. But yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah so uh, I mean, you know, pick it up on that then the soldier slim so I'll get you mind right. I believe there was a, a different version shot for the video. And um, you know, what was some of the story around that? What was your experience like working with Slump? So this is my thoughts on it, right? I could be wrong, and and I'm sure everybody who probably gonna see this that was a part of that timing, they probably can correct you correctly, right? But when I tell you me and P had a different relationship, I was able, I was able to get out the condos he had us. Had all the new order, had all the artists in and get in the house, right? Everybody else was still in condo. Like, Damn, that's how, you know what I'm saying? So when Slim came home, I was doing a radio drop for uh for the radio station at Bad Rules. And I ain't I ain't even know Slim, but I knew, but I knew when he came home, he was supposed to be fucking with Pete, right? But when I when I was doing the, the radio drop for the DJ. I said, yeah, I just want to shout out my uh, shout out my dog, Soldier Slim, man. Hold your head up, you know what I'm saying? We got you when you get here. And he heard it. So when he come home, when I met him, cool in the fan, man. Like cool ass kid, man. We when we running it. So I guess because we both cut from the same cloth, 
You know what I'm saying? And what I mean by that, you know, being in out the penitentiary, like in that street light. So, so we just kind of jail. We kind of instantly jail. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, say, hey, see, we need to do something. I said, shit, let's do it. So he called Excel. We met over there. Got it up. Excel put the beat on. We running. Boom. He on one side. He right. I'm on the other side. Boom, boom, boom. Shit. He said, shit, what's up? You ready? I said, shit, let's do it. So boom, you go drop here. I go drop mine. While, while Excel, you know, he, he mixing it down. He said, let go, let go get something to eat. So we leave. We go, we get in this Cadillac. That's why I put, when you hear and I say, uh, uh, I roll the windows uh, to the lack. I roll down the windows to the lack and you hear that. <laughs> I was talking about his car, the Cadillac. So we get in this lack. We go, we go to Sinex to go get something to eat. We pull up. The little chicks come out. They still is him. They going crazy. Ah, boom, boom. So, you know, like I say, man, he, he was a cool dude, bro. Cool, cool cat, man. You know, outside of what he might have been into in the streets, you know, who he might have been into it with outside of all of that, just getting to know him, bro, like a dude. He, and he was smart. You know what I'm saying? He was smart, you know, so. But, but I, 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 I enjoyed the time. I, I, I got a time, chance to meet him, man, and kind of, you know, vibe with him a little bit before, you know, that this shit happened to him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What do you think of his um, fallout with, I guess, Pia No Limit at the time? Was you still around then, and do you think he had the business? I, from what I from what I know, it's valid. You know what I'm saying? From what I understand. Now, I could be wrong again, you know, because I, I I just kind of had my own lane. Again, you know, I'm I'm really the only artist, like I said, aside from 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 Peaches. From Baton Rouge, everybody else from New Orleans, so they kind of had their little thing with each other, and I just kind of had my little lane. I stayed social with everybody because we on the label, you know what I'm saying? And then, like I say, me and D, me and DIG, me and Crazy, we got we got a little tight because we stayed, you know, in the same uh, condos or whatever. But as far as like a lot of things that went on with P and everybody else, I kind of kind of stayed out of. But just from 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 what I'm hearing from different people that was kind of closely related to the, the situation. Like, you know, he 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 had he had some he had he had a foot to stand on, man, when he when he kind of did what he did, you know what I'm saying? You know. Uh, yeah. I mean when you was around another project, I know you was featured on the 504 Boys album, but we heard about a Fire Boys project and you was featured on a Fire Boys single. I mean, what was the vision behind the Fire Boys and um, can you tell us a bit more about that? Say it again, I I, I couldn't hear you. Um, the Fire Boys, you was also featured on um, a Fire Boys and Fire Girls um, song, which they said they was going to do a group called the Fire Boys at one point. Do you know anything about that? No, nah, I missed that one. No, nah, I don't know nothing about that one. Okay. Nah, it was a No Limit project they was um, promoting. I think on 504 Boys album, they were speaking about it and stuff. And um, it was an album DJ Rowe presents the Dirty South Boys. And... Mm. Uh, yeah, they had a track of them called Fire Boys and Fire Girls with all you guys. Yeah, I, I think I probably, I think I probably was gone by then. I think I probably was, I probably was, I probably would, I probably wouldn't now. Oh, because I, I don't remember, I don't never remember hearing or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Why I was there, you know? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, in terms of your time in the round of that, you know, what um, was your experiences like? just recorded with Mac on that 504 Buzz album and stuff. Was Mac in the studio then or had his, his verse and stuff already been missed? Yeah, he, he he was there. Every Everybody was there. Like, every everybody was there. Uh, uh, Magic, Mac, Mac laid back kind of cat. You know what I'm saying? Like, he ain't really, he ain't really like, a, he wasn't like a rah rock. You know what I'm saying? He kind of laid back, do his thing. Ball was dope. As you know, we all know listening to his album, boy, was nice, man. Uh, and, and it's just it's sad what happened, how he got caught up like that. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, but yeah, man, it was uh, it was a surreal feeling, man. Uh, all the stuff I used to see on the videos and hear about No Limit to be when I got to the house in the country club, and everybody was there. It was like it was a surreal moment for me. I couldn't believe I'm like, damn, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Like, Nigga, this nigga, it's about to go down, you know, and uh, and and, and it was. I, I think, I think, I think for the most part, most of the cats that I did work with with No Limit, 
and they got to know me. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it was it was a genuine uh, likeness for me, just like I had for them. Uh, and I think I think if so, because P. Harris he was dealing with so much. Like, he was fucking with Lil Romeo, and he had uh, the sporting Asian thing. Uh, all, all other, yeah, he had so much stuff that he 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 trying to fuck with the lead and stuff like that. I think if he had the time to really just uh, uh, fuck with us, uh, it, we we could we we could have did some things, man. You know what I'm saying? But I got a lot of notoriety from 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 fucking with no nigga. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, so so what P did for me as far as me being able to leave that and then pursue my own career with the music. I did well until I had, until you know I, I I went back to jail, but for the most part, man, I got a chance to see the world. I got a chance to perform with and around people that 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 other people only see on TV. Like Nelly, Nelly, Nelly was opening up for us before he blew up. Nelly was opening up for us, man. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, Silk the Shocker go on first, then see Murder go on. So everybody had they. They, they, they person who they would go on with, right? And so then P will come on last. So we'll go on to stay with P. And man, I'm talking about, it was like phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, just to be just to be a part of that, uh, I, I would do it again if I could. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Actually, they just they just came down here uh, on the little uh, No Limit reunion. Talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was good. I went, me and my wife went, man. She was like, babe, I got you some tickets. I said, huh? She said, yeah, I know you probably want to, you know, and I, I really wasn't going to go. Yeah. But I'm glad I went, man. I was able to see Mac. I, I said, man, I'm glad he rest back and got Mac. Brought yeah. him out, let him perform, man. That was good. But, you know, mythical, he he turned it out. That boy there, man. Yeah. I <laughs> mean, we got, we got to get to a couple of um, questions that, you know, did it with, I guess, your departure from No Limit. But before that, we got a couple of fan questions that were sent in. One of them is from Mixer Reviews, or I guess this is a series of questions, and this is in regards to your album. And he says, was the album ever completed? If so, how many songs were recorded for the album? And why was the album never released? And this would be for the No Limit album, Back on the Block. Yeah, so the album the album was completed. Uh, and that's part of the reason, that's part of the, my reason why I ended up leaving. And when I said P was dealing with so much, like he had a system about how stuff was gonna drop, right? So, so my album was done, right? And uh, so I'm like, you know, P was having it. So he was like, see, we gonna, we, 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 we gonna, we gonna get to it. So for two years, I'm steady living off another man money, you know, paying my rent up, woo, woo, but I'm, I'm at the point where, hey, I'm, I'm, I want to, I want to make my own money. I, I want to do my, you know, I, I want to, you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me earn my keep. You know what I'm saying? And so, but we never got around to being able to put the album out. And so after being that, being there with two years, you know, some, some cats would be like, well, see, you ain't got to pay no bills. You good. No, and people, whoop, whoop. but I ain't that type of brother. Right. So I'm like, man, I want, I, I want to get my own money. I want to establish myself. I want to get hurt. I want to, you know, I want to create, you know what I'm saying? A uh, 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 revenue for myself. And so I, I hollered at P one day and I was like, uh, I said, hey man, look, check this out. Like, you know, I ain't getting no younger, man. So I know you got a lot going on. And I'm just saying it might be, it might be a better situation for me if I just kind of, you know, drop out and do my own little thing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he was like, shit, that's man, we know, blah, blah, blah. Hey man, if that's what you think is best for you, bud, like I ain't tripping, you know what I'm saying? And but this this was a part of the business I didn't know about. I didn't know about the business side of, of the music game, right? So with all the so by me leaving, by me leaving No Limit before my contract was up untimely by P releasing me, what I did was I forfeited all my everything that I was I was supposed to get paid, royalties and stuff like that. I forfeited all of that over by signing untimely out of my out of my contract. I didn't know that. So for every album that that gets sold that I'm on, I'm supposed to get a percentage. I do my own writing. I didn't really know about ASCAP and all that, you know. So so I, I wouldn't even been getting paid for for, for for my lyrics that I was writing. The writers, um, 
yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so it was a lot. It was a lot that I learned from that situation with no limit. And so whenever I started my own situation, is when I is when I capitalized on the things I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Uh so so again, everything that I experienced with no limit, some of it was disheartening. I I, I wish it could have been different, but I learned so much. I got a chance to experience so much. I can't I can't even explain some of the some of the things that used to happen in some of the cities we used to perform in. How you know, man, it just man, it just blow your mind, really. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but but yeah, so that's 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 part of the reason why I made my exit is because they never got a, got around to put my album out. And after being there two years, I'm like, hey man, I I think I might get I might hit the ground and make something happen for myself. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just before we got to the other fan question, um, I, I want to ask on the album note: Was there any, you know, don't additional features that you, ha- you had on there? Was it just in-house or did you have any features from outside of the tag? But yeah, so so a couple a couple of cats that 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 I was bringing along, you know, uh, my little brother Killer Black, uh, the dude named Sose from Baton Rouge, he, he even done a couple of tracks and he, he he was doing some features on, he would have been on my album. And, and aside from that, it was mostly in-house, you know what I'm saying? Uh, me and Crazy had a song, uh, me and D, D me, me and D.I.G. Uh, uh, me and C had a song. Uh, he had uh, No Limit East. It was one of them cats from 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 up there. We I did a song with. So yeah, it was you know it, it was it was mostly in house, but I had a couple cats from my hood that you know that I, that I was gonna bring along. You know. Dope. That would have been dope, man. And we got another question from Mr. Toneman, and he says, um, "Who was you the closest with on the tank?" And um, I guess a, a segue after that, he says, "What are you doing for yourself now?" Um, I'm gonna say me and me and me and Miss Peaches was the closest because again, we from Baton Rouge. We both, you know, we got we got history. Um, uh, and I, I speak about crazy and, and Dig mostly because. We probably was the tightest out of everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, and yeah, probably that's probably probably for the most part, uh, them two other than Peaches. And uh, and so they want to know what I'm doing for myself right now. Yeah, yeah. So right now, uh, I got a, I got a, uh, I got a, a two way labeling company. It's like a digital label, labeling company. And um, it's called Closet Keepers. So you know we we doing we doing well right now. I also still work. I've been working and I've been an EVS director for about the last about the last five years. So I'm just waiting on this company to do to do what it's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm gonna I'm gonna just focus strictly on on the business side. Uh, I got into a little real estate. I had a house built in Katy Cross and probably probably about. A little bit over a year ago, I sold it. I put it up for two forty. I made about two hundred and eighty grand. So, um, and right now I'm in a I'm in another house in which probably in about about six months I'm probably gonna start leasing this one out. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean I'm doing I'm doing pretty good for myself. I ain't I ain't tripping, man. You know. Um, but yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, yeah, no, that's pretty dope. And um, and in terms of Master P, can you? Was the last conversation that you had with them? Have you seen him any other times since then? Like, or was that it? No, that the last conversation I had was with him when I told him I thought I might be better if I could kind of just go and do my own little thing, man. Uh, it's it's crazy because uh, <laughs> so my wife, who's my wife now, like she know about the history already. She didn't see the song, heard the song, and stuff like that. So when she tried to when she surprised me with the no limit tickets. She went on his uh, Instagram page. Now I didn't know she was doing this, but she said, "Yeah, I sent him a a message saying I'm ex-con wife. He was on no limit. He was on, um, you know. She told him what songs I was on, and was hoping that he could bring me on stage or, 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 or see me in person. And I'm, I, I was shocked that she would even do that. But she said he never, nobody never responded, nobody from his camp. I said, well, yeah, generally they ain't." They don't too much be on them pages themselves, you know what I'm saying? I think they be having, they be having people that respond to that type of shit. But 
you know, they probably get all kind of spam mail or spam texts from people claiming who they, you know what I'm saying? So they, I, I figured they wouldn't answer you. But yeah, she tried to, she yeah, tried to get, get what we They do. probably get hundreds and thousands of messages. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, you're not, if they ain't following you, it going into a different inbox and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, dope, man. But, you know, you definitely, um, you know, still positive about your experience and stuff like that, which is dope. As you said, sometimes there's people that have differences just within their experience or their outlook on things, but you right. value the, um, the opportunity and stuff for what it was. And um, if you could go back, we do all the same again? Absolutely. Uh, but but I, I look at it from the business side first, though. You know what I mean? Look at it from the business side first, uh, and, and not take for granted that opportunity to, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, that's a that's the opportunity that many people don't get a chance to do. You know what I'm saying? And I did coming home from the penitentiary, it, it, and it's crazy. Like, I, I I anticipate on writing the book because when I tell my life story to people, and I'd be like, man, I came from the penitentiary. Got with one of the biggest independent labels in the world, Master P. Traveled the world, boom, boom. Go back and forth to the penitentiary, lose everything. And then I leave my home state. I move to a different state because I say, man, I, I just need a different, I just need something different. I need to start fresh. And I end up just through hard working, working in a hospital, working in a hospital where, well, I've been an EPS director and I'm controlling I'm controlling so much money. And, and you would think somebody with my background to be in that type of position and then to to to, to be able to accomplish the things I, I, I accomplished, even with having that jacket that I had. And so for that, I just want to tell everybody who may be experiencing similar situations coming from the jailhouse, hey man, they ain't gonna give you nothing. But you can't take no for an answer. You gotta keep grinding, man. You gotta keep putting in that work. And whatever you believe in, you stand on it. Well, uh, it took me a long time to get to the to get in the in, in the in the mind frame that I'm in right now. And I'm always thinking on on high vibration levels, thinking positive. Not that resistance won't happen, not that negativity won't enter. But the more positive I think, the more the more I'm able to focus on the task at hand. The shit work. It's been working. Like I, I I've been home. I've been home. Over 13, 14 years now. I ain't had a run in with the laws, everything in my name. So yeah, man, I I, I really can write a book. <laughs> I really can write a book, man. It, it might be a bestseller, you know what I'm talking about. So, you know. Uh, you know, that's a good yeah. I'm a, a message that you gave there. I usually ask people to give um, you know, a message for young people, but I think you definitely summed a lot up there in that. Um, in terms of the book, it's definitely something I'd say to consider, especially nowadays, it's a lot easier to even self-publish and put things out there and stuff like that as well. So well, uh, there's a lot more, you know, different options for getting books out there. Um, is there any thing musically that you have coming up or is that a part of the game that you've just um sort of put on the back burner for a minute? So on the last time when I got out, I did some stuff down here. But I guess I just really got into my mind like man, I done got too old for this shit, man. I'm just I'm just gonna focus on, you know, this grown man shit, man. And and so I, it's it's crazy because whenever I go back home to visit my relatives, I'll be in Baton Rouge, dudes who see me, they be like, what's up, Edge? What what the feelings you got, man? We still waiting. So I'm like, I'm like, man, I say, man, I'm too old for all that, man. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I don't know. I, in some parts of me, I, I be saying, man, with, with all these social media uh, outlets, I could just put some jewels out there, just drop it in, you know, and for the people who, who did follow me or that was looking for the album to come out, just give them something, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then, and then the other side of it, but like, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm really done though. I think I'm done with the music, man. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, lastly, before we wind out, what do you think of, um, the new music nowadays and just, you know, where music's at with the culture? Honestly, I, I don't like I don't like much of it, uh, because a lot of it sound the same. 
and he and he pretty much talking about the same, the same, the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be drugs. It's gonna be how much money they got. It's gonna be how many dudes they kill. Uh, but that's the time that we in. That that that's the way how the big labels. That's what they push because that's what's selling. I just hate the damage that it's doing on the other end of the people that's listening to it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, some 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 of them cats though, just like just like Mo three. Like I, I I was on I was on him before he got killed, but it's almost like once you once you get killed, that's when you that's when you blow up, and it's like the whole world know him now. But the ball was raw, like the talent, man. It, it was it's undeniable, like. But it's just. It's just the thing that they promoting their music, even like Young Dolph, very talented dude, business wise. The, the stuff that he did outside of music, for his, for his, for where he from, you know what I'm saying? His neighborhood, his city. But, but when you listen to their music, their music tell you what they really involved in. You know what I'm saying? And if it doesn't, then you propagate that. And if that's if that, that's the energy that you propagate, I mean. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, it's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, um, I don't, I don't like it, but I know that that's, that's what sells, you know, violence, drugs, that's what sells. So, you know, the music I like, I listen to, the, the music I don't like, just push it to the side, bro, you know? Yep. I know you said you were more of a cash money fan at some point, but we usually ask people their top um, five No Limit albums of the, you know, the classic No Limit collection. So or you could go with your top five No Limit artists. My top five No Limit artists? Hmm. Well, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Magic. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, I'm gonna say D.I.G. Oh, Matt. Hmm. I like I like some of I like some of seat stuff. I ain't like I ain't like everything, but I, I like I like some of. Oh, he he got down he got down too man. Uh, but that's that's probably that's probably about it. That's probably about it. I probably don't even have five. That's probably about it. Okay. And lastly, you know, any any magic stories? I know that, you know, rest in peace, magic people always um, ask about magic sometimes in the comments if anybody has any, you know, magic still. Yeah. yeah. I, I really don't have any other than when we all was together, uh, I think, I forget where we was, but we was traveling. He a comedian, very funny dude, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, down to earth, like we used to kick it like he do me. Like he been knowing me, you know what I'm saying? So I, I got a good vibe from him, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I'm a pretty good judge of character. He was a cool dude. And I and I think he used to be in Baton Rouge. I don't know if he, he stayed out there. I know he used to record, I know he used to record down there at Baton Rouge, like like in uh uh I forget the part of town. But oh uh, yeah, he was cool dude. Bro. I, I ain't I ain't really have a lot of personal situations with him, but just being around him a few times I was. Yeah, they had a good vibe, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, no doubt. I think that kind of winds us down. Um, you know, we haven't had any more fan questions in. Some of them that we did have, you already answered within the conversation and stuff like that too. So uh, we okay. definitely appreciate that. And you yeah, yeah. your time to us and stuff like that. We're all filling in some of the gaps and, uh, you know, taking the time to tap in. Already, already, man. Well, I appreciate you, King. And uh, again, man, I, I want to shout out my daughter, for Jay Randall. He the one put me up on you, man. So, you know, big ups to you, bro. Keep putting in that work, man. Keep doing these interviews. Uh, I, I think it's I think it's beneficial. You know what I'm saying? Not only to myself to be able to tell my side, but to the people who who knew about us being able to get an inside, you know, um, picture of what was really going down. You know what I'm saying? So, I appreciate that, bro. Much love, man. So, family, definitely continue to like, share, support. And if you join us on YouTube, hit that notification bell to be updated on new drops and content. Yes, sir. You got it, baby. You got it. One love, man. Yes, sir. 
Peace family, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on bout.online.com. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook for exclusive playlists and social media for all different types of segments and content.